Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Saviors Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Saviors is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our traditional worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning. Happy Sunday to you. It's good to see you here today. Thanks for joining us. This is our second Sunday in Lent, and as you may have already heard, in our Lenten series, Ask, we're embracing questions. We're pondering what we do not know, opening ourselves to some uncertainty, holding space in worship for discernment, and I get that at times this kind of uncertainty can feel destabilizing, challenging, uncomfortable. So before we enter a searching time, let me tell you something unquestionably true. God loves you, God embraces you, and God uses everything, even the uncertain, to create love and connection. So thank you for connecting with us here today. Let me share some announcements with you this morning. You know, these last few weeks, a few of you have asked us, what is Lent? Or how can I get more involved in the season? These are good questions because not every Christian tradition has a Lenten practice. During Lent, we count the days through discipline, prayer, spiritual practices like worship and daily devotions. It's just, it's a lot more than just giving something up. To join our Lenten conversation around here, you could take one of our daily devotion guides, which we have at the Welcome Center or in the church office. We're printing them off as we need them, so so there's definitely one for you. And come for midweek worship this Wednesday, either at noon with soup and pie to follow, yes, or at 6.40 p.m., a light supper will be served before uh, from 5 to 6.15. Also, during this season of Lent, we encourage you to use the envelopes that you find in your rows to give toward replenishing our crisis care fund, which goes to people who come to us during the week needing some assistance. Also, on a separate note, when someone you love dies, people come to support you at the funeral, and some of you have been going through that this week, but then they move on, and you're stuck with this hole in your life that you just can't fill. If this sounds like your experience, like the place you are today, then you should join our recent loss group, which will meet the next few Wednesdays in the chapel, 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. We have a few things to celebrate as a whole church today. First, congratulations to our fourth graders who are here in worship with us today. They're going to celebrate their Apostles' Creed milestone, which means they've learned about the central element in the Christian faith, and they're going to lead our worship life today uh, saying the Apostles' Creed. So let's say congratulations to them. Thank you, fourth graders. Yay. Second, we thank God for your gifts that express our core value of generosity. A few weeks ago, we gave you the opportunity to respond to the horrific earthquake in Turkey and Syria, and today you have given over $4,700 that will go directly to support those most affected by this disaster. I, I don't want to applaud the disaster, you guys, but I do want to celebrate how God has worked through you to respond to the people in our world who are most in need. So thank you for that. And one more clappy thing. We pastors want to tell you something else. The last several weeks, we have noticed several new folks at our church, both young and old alike, and we have seen many of you reach out and greet people you do not know, literally crossing the aisle to talk to them in worship or sitting with them in coffee and conversation um, on Sunday morning. So thank you for that. Yeah. Folks, if you are new here, I I want you to know we are truly glad you're here. And um, and our saviors, thank you for continuing to make this place a, a place of welcome and hospitality for all people. To that end, let me invite you to a whole afternoon of fun here at Our Saviors. Our fantastic lending libraries had an open house all morning. They will be open after worship. Go in and check it out. It is a, it's, it's, I always say it's our family's favorite library, and it's totally true. And uh, after church, we have our long-awaited chili cook-off. I, my mouth is watering already. I've had to smell this amazing chili all morning. 
And after that, we're going to take a bunch of you that have eaten chili and confine you in one room for a showing of the Princess Bride downstairs. So see, there's a lot of fun ahead. It's going to be a blast. And um, thank you for coming to worship here at Our Saviors. It's time to stand and sing. And after we do this, we'll invite our fourth graders forward. So let's sing, Bless Now, O God, the Journey. You may be seated as I welcome our fourth graders and their families forward for the Apostles' Creed milestone. Church, the fourth graders have been practicing their Apostles' Creed at home and in Sunday school and learning the words and some of the meaning so that they can participate in worship more fully with the whole congregation. They also spent the last hour with Pastor Tim exploring their beliefs in God and creating a special project that they will be able to take home to help them remember their faith milestone. As you're coming forward, parents and caring adults, I just want to thank you for your dedication to pass on your faith to your children. On this day, you've reached another milestone in your own faith because at your child's baptism, you helped, you promised to help your children learn the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the Ten Commandments. And at this point, your child has reached all those faith milestones too. So thank you. Fourth graders, I am proud of you and your work. You guys can look at me. Why don't you turn around and face me for a second? Don't look at them for just a second. I am proud of you and your work learning the Apostles' Creed. You will continue to learn the meaning of these words too in confirmation. Parents and caring adults, you can put a hand of love on this child's head or shoulders, and let's share a moment of blessing with them. I'm going to say a line of this blessing, and I want you to repeat it after me. Dear God, Thank you for walking with this child on this journey of faith. Help them to continue growing in this faith and learn to live that faith in everyday life. Bless them with these gifts. Amen. Now, church, please stand together. And we are all going to proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. So you'll see that on the screen. And fourth graders, you have that right in front of you. Let's say it together on the count of three. One, two, three. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Fourth graders, you have just led us in an ancient symbol of our faith that is almost 2,000 years old. And in doing this, you have joined the rest of our Christian faith in grabbing hold of this tradition that we have inherited. We thank you for helping lead us this morning. <laughs> Folks, you may be seated. Together as one people of God, let us pray. Holy God, you shaped this world with joy, and you have placed us here to lovingly tend your beautiful, bountiful, and wonderful world. Yet so many people feel divorced from the goodness in your creation, the goodness in their neighbor, and the goodness in themselves. The earth, your creation, is broken today. We ask for your healing as we pray. Like a parent, you wish you could take our pain as your own, yet if you have come to teach us and you speak to us today, why do we struggle to hear and understand? Hold us closer when we suffer. And draw closer to our friends whose concerns we share with you today, especially Courtney Solberg and Gary Burnham. Your people, your beloved, are broken today. We ask for your salvation as we pray. Thank you for bringing us together to share your name and your purpose and a world to love. Thank you for Adeline Rose Walner, who has met you at the Well of Living Water and Baptism this week. We also celebrate with Kajana Lamp and Tucker Gross on the birth of their son, Roman Anthony Gross. Thank you for healing our bodies and our spirits and our society in this place. Be patient with us, because we judge one another even though you are shamelessly gracious. The church, your holy people, are ready today. We ask for your spirit as we pray. Amen.
Thank you. Today, as we read from the scripture, this whole season we're hearing longer stories from the Gospels and last week Genesis. And as we, as we read this reading, we want to have a chance for you to settle into it a little bit and hear this dialogue that evolves in the middle of the night between a priest named Nicodemus and Jesus. The reading begins. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, the leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Their conversation continued. Nicodemus said, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can these things be? Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, We speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Humanity. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Humanity be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God, word of God, a word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
know, I think we should go ahead and collect our offering now. So, um, Josh, if you can go ahead to that part there in the, in the liturgy. Before we collect our offering today, we prepare ourselves with a moment of prayer, which we'll say together. God, prepare us to give today to each other and to you. Give us boldness so we might ask our neighbors what they truly need. Give us humility so we might listen to their answers. Give us patience to tolerate disappointment as we wait for goodness to grow. Give us generosity so others can benefit from the money and food and other things the world tells us to keep to ourselves. Give us abundance so no one ever leaves here hungry. Amen. We receive our offering. Kids, you can come up here and gather our noisy offering, which goes to our partners at Susan B. Anthony Elementary School. Good job, kids. So I want you to think about this act of collecting the offering, which we do right after hearing this story about Nicodemus. Nicodemus, a priest, this person who was a teacher of Israel, comes to Jesus with a lot of questions, a lot of his own uncertainty. And this is what happens anytime we give a gift to God. We come to God filled with uncertainty for how the things we offer, the gifts we raise, the bread we bake, how God will use these things, how God will multiply these things. But it's not our job always to determine the end of the things we give to God. So with this in mind, with humility and with open hearts to wherever God is calling us, let's pray. God, what will you do with these gifts? We may never know. But we like Nicodemus, carry a faith passed to us through generations. 
We set the table of food and drink harvested by many hands. We break the bread of answered prayers. Use the gifts we give today to grow tomorrow's mercy. Amen. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, life is full of questions. Sometimes they are simple and easy to ask, but other times they fill us with uncertainty and fear. We are grateful that you listen to us when we come to you in prayer. May we listen for the gentle response of your spirit to guide us to greater understanding and peace. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship in this season of Lent, the second Sunday of Lent, the second Sunday in our Lenten series, Ask, where we are reminded through the stories from Scripture of the loving way in which God meets us in the midst of life each day. And each week within these Scripture lessons that we have heard, questions of faith and life challenge us in new ways. And along the way, we might even find that some of these stories help us understand some of those things in our own life that we ourselves have been struggling with personally. It's amazing how these ancient stories from Scripture still speak to us anew in our world today and in our own lives. And Lent is a special time for us to focus on these stories from Scripture, to wrestle with these questions of faith and life, to dive a little bit deeper into our understanding of what it is we believe about God and ourselves. This is what we, are, we hope that you are able to do together with us through this Lenten season as we preach our series, Ask. So instead of giving something up during this season of Lent, we have asked you to add a few more questions to your life, to your journey throughout this season. And in doing so, hopefully we all will grow in our understanding of God's love for us during this holy time of year. So today, our questions come to us from John's Gospel, where Jesus meets a man called Nicodemus. And they have come together one evening under the cover of darkness to grow in their understanding of each other. Nicodemus and Jesus, well, they both seem to be full of questions for each other. And I do believe maybe even a bit of respect and, and, and definitely love. For they ask their questions, and as they do so, they acknowledge that they see the Spirit of God at work in each other. For Nicodemus, he sees God's Spirit at work in Jesus in ways that he has never seen before. It was all so strange, these things that that Jesus was saying to him. As Nicodemus questions Jesus and Jesus questions him, a greater understanding begins to grow between them and a lasting relationship that will bring them together time and time again. You see, Nicodemus becomes one one of those characters within the Gospel of John that takes on a reoccurring role, showing up from time to time out of the blue in the story to support Jesus. In chapter 7, he defends Jesus before his accusers. And in chapter 19, Nicodemus, along with Joseph of Arimathea, buries Jesus after his crucifixion. Although his role in John's gospel is small, These stories of his faith and life are something that we should not skip over too quickly, for they speak to us of a person who, like us, sees something in Jesus that is unlike anything we've ever known before. A reflection of God that challenges us to see God's love in a whole new way. You know, of all the characters within the Gospel of John, Nicodemus has become one that I have that have grown to appreciate. He's a man that, that finds himself torn between two worlds, one that he has known all of his life and one that has opened up to him in a whole new way through this strange person, Jesus. Who is this teacher that, is, that has walked into his life and unexpectedly placed new questions within his heart? Nicodemus needed to know more. And so he comes to Jesus one night. 
I perhaps like Nicodemus because, well, maybe he reminds me a little bit of myself, for I, like him, have devoted my life to the mission and work of God's church. I've studied and learned and grown in my own understanding of our faith and what it is we believe to be true about God, and yet, like Nicodemus, I too continue to wrestle with my questions about God and faith. And to be honest, more often than not, answers to my questions have seemed hard to find. But like Nicodemus, questions for me have become a source of comfort and strength. For within my search for answers, I have found a God who is willing to wrestle with me in the uncertainties and fears that I have. Within these times of searching, I have come to see just how close God is to all of us and how willing God is to help us grow in our understanding of God's great love for all of creation. I think that's what's happening to Nicodemus in our story today. As he comes to Jesus one night with the questions of his heart. I love the way the story begins. Right off the bat, something new, something interesting. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. I mean, Nicodemus had heard and seen Jesus before in the daytime. He was there with other religious leaders. He could have asked his questions then. Maybe people would have seen and heard him do it in the daytime. He might have looked important or wise even in that situation in the daytime when everyone could have seen and heard him. But maybe that wasn't important to Nicodemus. Maybe he wanted more than just to be noticed. Maybe he wanted understanding. Understanding of who this man Jesus was, this person who had placed so many questions within his heart. Who was this person who had stirred his soul with his teachings? Nicodemus needed to know more. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God for No one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. In the nighttime. Often it is in the silence of the night that we find ourselves closest to God in prayer. Do you know what I mean? In the silence of the night when there's no one else around to see us, no one else around to hear us, when there is only us and God. In the silence of the night, that is when Nicodemus came to Jesus with his questions. Maybe it was because he truly wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. We don't know for sure. But as their conversation continues, we begin to see within their dialogue a back-and-forth search for meaning and understanding of each other and what they both believed about God. I mean, all of his life, Nicodemus had sought to understand God. He was a Pharisee, a man who understood the religious laws of his people and probably tried to live the best that he could according to these laws himself. And now Jesus had come along. And what he was saying seemed to contradict some of these things that that Nicodemus believed about these laws, or at least, at the very least, some of the things Jesus said was clouding his understanding. But instead of rejecting Jesus, like some had done, were trying to silence Jesus like other religious leaders were doing, Nicodemus tries to understand these strange new things that Jesus was saying. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus says to Nicodemus, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus responds, How can anyone be born after having grown old. 
Maybe his question is ours too, but with a little different meaning. How can we change our past? What's done is done. We can't go backwards. The law is clear. And so we sit there with Nicodemus, staring at Jesus with a puzzled look on our face, waiting for an answer. Very truly, Jesus says patiently, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. There was something new that Jesus was teaching about God, something that Nicodemus had never heard before, something that Jesus not only taught, but had come to do. Jesus had come into the world to die for us and for our sins, the sins that the law convicted us of, the law that Nicodemus knew so very well. Jesus was now saying that the only way to be born again was through him. In our baptisms, we are washed clean and made one with Christ in his death and resurrection through the power of the Holy Spirit. Our old self with all of our sins is washed clean in the waters of baptism, and we are born again in the likeness of Christ. God has come to give healing and new life through the one who sat and listened to Nicodemus' questions and gave him a promise that through his cross that God was about to make all things new. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. Did he understand? We don't know. But we do know that Nicodemus continued to follow after Jesus, listening to him, sometimes defending him, and ultimately standing before his cross as he died. What questions continue to go through his heart? What questions of God are in ours? Nicodemus began a new adventure that day, that night, And so do we, every time we come to God with our questions of faith. Christ sees us for who we are, with all of our doubts and fears, all of our uncertainties and questions, all of our mistakes and sins, and looks into our confused face and says to us, I know who you are and what you've done and all the questions that you have. And I have come to show you God's great love in a whole new way. Remember, I am the one who makes all things new. And I have already begun to do this in you. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. But in order that the world might be saved through him. How can this be? Nicodemus questioned. Maybe ours too. Wait and see, Nicodemus, and I will show you. Wait and see, people of God. God shows us through great love. Amen. We'll sing hymn 330 now. As we do communion servers, you're invited to come back and prepare a holy meal.
Please stand as you're able. Where is our God? God is here in this place. Where are your hearts? We have given them to God. What shall we do in the presence of our God? We shall give our thanks and praise. Praise and thanks go to you, great God, from the first days of humankind, when your people fell far from you in sin. The first sinners wondered if you still loved them. Your answer was yes. When your people was enslaved, they wondered if you cared enough to bring them to freedom. Again, you said yes. Anytime your people were exiled and afraid, the prophets wondered if your people would live again. And always, always, your answer was yes. Out of your unflinching yes for our salvation, you sent our Savior Jesus. When everyday people met your Son, they asked, He cannot be the Messiah, can he? Christ's abundant forgiveness, humiliating death, and glorious resurrection all answered yes to the question of your love. Now, humble people, we respond with our own affirmation. Is our God loving? Does our God work for the good for those who wait for justice? Does our God bring new life to those who have died? Together we say, yes, yes, yes. Even those who knew Jesus best lived under the burden of unanswered questions. And when Jesus gathered them for one last meal, doubts swirled with uncertainty in their hearts. So to explain God's love, to show it and share it, Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat because this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks for it, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. So take this and drink and do this to remember me. Jesus, you asked us to ask you for anything we need, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, my friends. Remember today, you never have to question God's great love for you. So come and share food blended with holiness, and you will become people who delight in all that God has done as you joyfully wonder what God will make of us today. Let's eat.
Good morning and Lenten blessings to each of you from our saviors here in Sioux Falls. As you probably heard earlier in worship, we're focusing on questions during Lent as an exercise in going deeper in our faith. What do you think stirred within you today that helped you decide to join us for worship? Is worshiping with us, even if it's from a distance, a spiritual discipline that you try to prioritize? Is there something going on in your life right now for which you are seeking spiritual guidance? Did you sense a special nudge from the Holy Spirit encouraging you to tune in as a way of reconnecting with a portion of your life that maybe feels distant or even absent? Whatever the reason, we're glad you're here. We believe it was the Holy Spirit that brought us together, and we hope that this time that we've shared has affirmed for you the truth that we profess, that God loves you and will stop at nothing to be in relationship with you. Everything we do here at Our Saviors is part of proclaiming that truth, and the impact of our proclamation increases when we partner together to make it all happen. What would it mean for you to become a sustaining partner in this ministry of sharing the good news of God's love? Imagine the impact you could help provide by giving a portion of what God has given you in support of this ministry that we share. You can give securely online or by text right now. Just follow the directions that appear on your screen. If you already contribute to our ministry, would you consider increasing your gift as a way of broadening the impact of our mission? If you'd like to do that, simply call Barb Haugen and she'll help update your offering. Thanks for giving all of that some prayerful thought and once again for joining us today. As you move into the week ahead, let this question guide you. How will you be God's presence in the world. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. There is nothing better than sharing that meal together. Thank you, people. Friends, you, now you have tasted God's goodness for yourself. Is our God loving? Does our God work for the good of all? Does our God bring new life? Together we say it again. Yes, yes, yes. Lenten blessings to each of you from our saviors here.
Hey, kids, if you're out there, why don't you come up here? Come on up. (laughs) I want to tell you something about our worship. It's a little unusual right now. And I want to point it out to you so that we can think about it as a whole group together today. Kids, I know when you come to church, sometimes things aren't always understandable. And we have patterns in church that happen frequently. And part of the reason that we have these regular patterns is so that we get to understand what's happening in worship, even if we don't know or explain all the time why it happens. But we're just about to do the part in worship where we send people out into the world. And we almost always end this part of worship by saying, go in peace. And then all the people say, what, do you know? Thanks be to God. Something like that. It's kind of our way of saying, yes, we're on our way out of here, and we're going to go do God things now for the world. That's what this part of worship is about. You've come here, we've fed you, now it's time to go out so that you, who are stronger now, can do God's work in the world. But because this is a series all about questions, we're actually ending each worship service with a question. A question is an invitation for us to respond in some way. So that's what we're going to do now. As we close worship, I'm going to give everyone out here a question, an invitation. And I'm going to give that invitation to you, too. And this is kind of the perfect invitation, especially for young people. Because fourth graders, you're here. You led us in worship today. You are already leaders among us. Which means that you kids have as much of God's work to do as me or Pastor Tim or anyone else. So hear these words of the sending now. Hear the invitation God gives as we prepare to go out and serve the world. Go now in the name of our Savior Jesus, who always listens as we pray. When you leave this place, go and do the work of God in the good daylight. But remember, Jesus also welcomes those whose questions keep them awake long past dark. In your life, who loses sleep over unanswered questions? You do not have to solve everyone else's problems. But will you stay with them late into the night so they might know God's presence? Let's go. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.